They've weaponized the Justice Department. They've weaponized the FBI. And they've come at me with the worst indictments. If they want to follow through on this, uh, yeah, it could certainly happen in reverse. It could certainly happen in reverse. What they've done is they've release the genie out of the box. They have done something that allows the next party. I mean, if somebody, if I happen to be president and I see somebody who's doing well and beating me very badly, I say, go down and indict them. Mostly, that would be, you know, they would be out of business. They'd be out. They'd be out of the election. In my case, uh, it was, they were such pathetic indictments. Okay. And that that's a dictatorship. They don't see the signs of fascism. And they don't see that they, they will be the next it. victims of this vitriol. They well, and, and the it. reality is this is he's Donald Trump is running for president for two reasons to stay out of jail and to get revenge on his enemies. And when he right. speaks, we should listen. And frankly, it's scary. Um, he's already said he's going to come after people like General John Kelly, my former boss, Chairman Mark Milley, people who dare to stand against him, Mike Pence. Journalists. Um, I, yeah, I think there's reason us. for all of us to be concerned. What about us? But there's a, there's a really interesting. <laughs> try it. Go ahead, try Ryan, we have this there's, show every day, okay, yeah. Donald? Um, <laughs> there's a really interesting metaphor in uh, Susan Glasser's book, The Divider, about Trump, where she describes him like the dinosaur in Jurassic Park who gets smarter and he learns how to open the door. I have a legal note. A Trump aide said that the former president was not claiming that he was going to seek retribution mm. against his political opponents, but attempting to make the point that a new precedent had been... Set. Eddie, Eddie's doing this to me. Had been, Had set, been by. set by the Biden Department of Justice. All right, guys. So we got to talk about the mainstream liberal media. People like Jen Psaki having freakouts and meltdowns over the fact that Trump is declaring that Biden's weaponization of the DOJ to go out there and prosecute political opponents could backfire if he becomes president, hypothetically, right? Trump is simply just highlighting the fact that, hey, if I become president because of the precedents that the Democrats have set, uh, we could be in a situation where, yeah, I could weaponize the DOJ to go out to Biden because Democrats said that it's okay because this is what they're currently doing to me. Now, Trump didn't make any promises to do that. He simply just laid out a hypothetical situation that Democrats have created because Democrats are doing something that we've never seen in this country. Now, the mainstream liberal media is trying to take Trump's words like they always do and twist them in ways to make him say that he's saying something that he's not and thus creating a freak out that, oh my God, if Trump is elected, he's going to be some type of authoritarian dictator that's going to lock up anybody he disagrees with, right? Which that's clearly not what he's saying. And I'm going to play the clip for you guys so that you can see that that's not what he's saying. Listen to the full context of what Trump is saying. And clearly, it is a hypothetical in which he's talking about how Democrats are allowing this to happen. It is Democrats' fault if, for example, uh, somebody that they disagree with gets in political office, now they can weaponize the DOJ because of what Biden did or what he's doing. Biden is a man who... Uh, has unleashed something that's a very bad thing because when that happens to me, it can happen to them. And, you know, he's a very corrupt president. You say they've weaponized the Justice yeah. Department, they weaponized the FBI. Would you do the same if you're reelected? Well, the, he's unleashed something that everybody, we've all known about this for a hundred years. We've watched other countries do it. And in some cases, effective. And in other cases, the country's overthrown or it's been totally ineffective. But we've watched this for a long time, and uh, it's not unique, but it's unique for the United States. Yeah, if they do this, they've already done it, but if they want to follow through on this, uh, yeah, it could certainly happen in reverse. It could certainly happen in reverse. What they've done is they've released the genie out of the box. You understand that? They've done something that nobody thought would happen. They've taken a president who was very popular. I got 70... Five million votes, much more than that, I believe. Mm -hmm. No president's ever gotten that many votes. And they've taken that number of people, and I think you can double it or almost you can triple it in terms of the real, the feeling. You can't do that. You can't go after people. You know, when you're president and you, you've done a good job and you're popular, you don't go after them so you can win an election. They've done indictments in order to win an election. They call it weaponization. And the people aren't going to stand for it. 
But yeah, they have done something that allows the next party. I mean, if somebody, if I happen to be president and I see somebody who's doing well and beating me very badly, I say, go down and indict them. Mostly, that would be, you know, they would be out of business. They'd be out. They'd be out of the election. In my case, uh, it was, they were such pathetic indictments, like, I challenge the election. I challenge the election. They, everybody challenges elections if they think they're wrong. The Democrats challenged my election in 2016. Almost everybody, they challenged it. Well, nothing happened there. So these are very, these are political indictments. These are Biden indictments. And the people get it. They really get it. It's been very impressive to watch. Yeah, everything Trump is saying there is 100% right. He's 100% right. He's 100% correct. Clearly and obviously what Trump is saying what he's doing, he's warning against what Biden is doing, right? He's sounding the alarm saying, look, throughout history, we've seen there's been governments and countries that have done this, that have went after their political opponents, simply locking people up uh, simply because they disagree with them politically. And that has not worked out well. OK, what Biden is doing is that they're setting a precedent that in the future, if somebody else gets in office that does not like Democrats, they can lock up Democrats simply because of having political disagreements with Democrats. The Democrats are opening the door to that, right? So hypothetically, if Trump was to become president, and this is what he's saying, then yeah, I mean, he could. He could do something like that uh, because Democrats have set the precedent for it. He's clearly saying that it's a bad thing, that we should not be doing this in the country. You should not be trying to go out to people solely for the sake of trying to get them out of elections. You're trying to rig the election by prosecuting and going after your political opponents. And especially considering how what they're going after Trump for, which is just contesting an election, is something that Democrats do every single time they lose, right? And nothing ever happens, just like Trump stated. So... Trump is not making any promises to go out to Biden, even though I think he should seek justice in the sense that uh, we should investigate uh, the Bidens, right? First of all, their crimes um, that they've committed, selling out the American people overseas, which we cannot forget about that. We can't just let that go. Uh, Biden should face justice for that. And also, he should be investigated for weaponizing the DOJ, and he should face justice for that as well, too. Okay, it's not revenge, it's simply justice. It is law and order. Now again, the mainstream liberal media, they have once again twisted what Trump is saying or what he said and try to make it seem like Trump came out and promised that he's going to lock up anybody that he disagrees with politically, right? And that leads me to Jen Psaki, who's having a full-blown freak out over what Trump said in his interview. And I want you guys to just see how the mainstream liberal media cut up the Trump interview to make it seem like he was saying something that he really wasn't saying and leaving out a bunch of context that really makes you understand exactly what he's saying more clearly. But again, it did not fit the narrative. So therefore they cut it up in a way to make it seem like Trump wants to be some authoritarian dictator when he's actually warning against that, right? That's actually what he's doing. So let's go ahead and roll this clip. After a long stretch of dark political predictions for Democrats and a lot of freaking out of our poll numbers, things did start to feel a little bit better this week. A Democratic governor was reelected in Kentucky. Democrats swept control of the Virginia legislature, which most people were not predicting. And the people of Ohio turned out in droves to protect abortion rights in their state. You might have found yourself thinking, all right, maybe things aren't so bad. Maybe I shouldn't be so terrified about the safety of democracy and my rights after all. The forces of good are winning out in the end. And I'm gonna tune this all out for a while of other things to worry about. If that's how you're feeling, I kind of get it. And there are some things to feel relieved about. But at the same time, the threat of a second Trump term is still very real. And the things he is saying right now are some of the most concerning things we have ever heard him say. So it's important for everyone to really start listening. If I happen to be president and I see somebody who's doing well and beating me very badly, I say, go down and indict them. Mostly what that would be, you know, they would be out of business. They'd be out. They'd be out of the election. Now, again, look at the clip that she played versus the whole context of the conversation. The clip she played made it seem like he was promising to do that, that 
he is going, I'm going to do that. I am going to take out anybody I disagree with politically, right? But that's not what he said. Clearly, in the context of the whole conversation, he's talking about why it's bad to do that and how Democrats have set a political precedent that allows others to get into office and to do that. But again, Jen Psaki is not going to play that, right? Because that doesn't fit the narrative that Trump is some dictator, right? Uh, when what Trump was actually doing was warning about the current dictator in office, Joe Biden, whom she fully supports. Again, that's what really blows my mind about the mainstream liberal media. They're so dishonest. And this is a prime example of what I'm talking about when it comes to dishonesty in regards to how they characterize the things that Trump says. If they're beating me, go down and indict them. Trump is forecasting that in a second term, he will wield power however he chooses, unconstrained by the rule of law. This is some truly scary, authoritarian, banana republic type stuff, and we should hear it that way. Again, the irony here, that's currently what's happening in the country. And what Biden uh, is doing is exactly what she's so afraid of. And that's what Trump was warning about, right? What, what Trump was actually doing was warning about what she apparently is so afraid of that Trump is going to do, but Biden's actually doing it right now. Again, amazing how she doesn't actually address that. They never actually really address the core argument that Trump is making, which is that the DOJ is weaponized. Because clearly and obviously that's the case. Everybody knows it's the case. Uh, the American people know that's the case. That's why Trump's poll numbers are going up, right? Trump's poll numbers are going up with every single indictment. Why is that? Because people clearly and obviously don't like what they're saying, right? And this is why when people say, well, if Trump is convicted, that's going to change everything. I honestly don't think so. I think that might guarantee that he wins, right? Because again, the indictments aren't stopping him. People are seeing that, yeah, they're trying to literally stop this man from being president. When this guy was in office, everything in this country was much better. They're running the country in the ground and they're trying to stop the band that can actually fix it, right? Where we actually had a good economy. They're trying to stop him from winning by throwing him in jail for doing something that Democrats always do, right? People are clearly seeing that what is happening is the weaponization of uh, the government against political opponents. Just yesterday, he took to Truth Social to imply that Democrats or any political opponents, frankly, are the greatest threat to America and need to be rooted out like vermin. Vermin is the word he used there. And it's not just rhetoric. Remember, The Washington Post reported just last week about specific plans Trump and his allies have drafted to put his words into action. On top of planning to launch investigations into people who dared to critique him or disagree with him during his time in office, including people who work for him. His team has also started to map out plans to invoke the Insurrection Act on his first day in office, which basically would allow him to dispatch the military against civil demonstrations. Think about how crazy that is. Okay, so again, what this is, is that this is Project 2025, right? Which I've talked about quite a bit. Basically, Project 2025 is a plan that was put together by former um, Trump White House officials and conservative think tanks to lay out a plan, and this is not even just for Trump. This is literally for any conservative president, right? This is the blueprint for any Republican slash conservative president. Once they get in office, the first 100 days, how they're going to dismantle the deep state, okay? that That's what Project 2025 is, okay? There's also some other things in there as well, too. You know, the mainstream liberal media is warning about, oh, they might arrest uh, rioters because that is... What is going to happen if, if Trump becomes president, the left, they're going to commit January 6th part two, right? That's exactly what they're going to do. They're going to riot in the streets. They're going to destroy things. They're going to vandalize property, okay? Because we've seen it before. That's what they did when Trump first won. That's what they did during the BLM riots. That's what they did during Roe v. Wade riots. That's what they did during Antifa riots. And they have not been punished for that, okay? They, they, they break the law. They don't get punished. So basically, yeah, I think that any Republican that gets into the White House should be punishing these protesters because that's what Democrats did to uh, the J6ers, right? In fact, I actually believe that any Republican that gets into the White House uh, that takes over the DOJ, they should go after the Roe v. Wade rioters that were trying to intimidate Supreme Court justices because that is a crime. That was a crime that they committed. We have them on video doing it and they face no punishment for it. 
None of them were arrested for it. And again, you had an attempted assassination on a Supreme Court justice. I think they should go even further. Go back and find the ones that got away with it before and go after them. Right? That's what they should do. And again, this isn't revenge. It is law and order because these left-wingers are out of control. They think they can do anything in this country without consequences because they have. They've committed crimes and they need to be punished for their crimes. Okay? So again, this is not revenge. It's law and order. Okay? That's what it is. So we're going to restore law and order in this country. So we, these left-wingers start, you know, protesting in the street and rioting and blocking traffic and destroying stuff and burning stuff on fire, destroying neighborhoods like they did before, you're going to jail. You get, we bringing in the military and we cleaning it up and you're going to get locked up, which is exactly what should happen. Again, nobody's talking about locking up peaceful protesters. If you're peaceful, you know, if you peacefully demonstrate, nobody cares about that. But these people are not peaceful. They're violent. So they're afraid that Republicans, and this is not, it doesn't just apply to Trump. They're afraid that Republicans are going to lock up violent uh, left-wing protesters. Now, again, does the Republican Party actually have the cojones to do that, <laughs> right? Considering history, no, they don't, right? So again, all this stuff that they're, you know, boo whining and crying about, the Republicans haven't shown that they're actually willing to do it. <laughs> so it really doesn't matter. But Democrats have shown they're willing to do it. Right. They have shown they're willing to do the things that Jin Saki is boohoo whining and crying about. That's the irony here. Oh, and in the same Univision interview, he also defended his family separation policy at the border. And new reporting from The New York Times this weekend confirms he also has plans for sweeping raids of undocumented immigrants, mass deportations and the creation of giant camps. He wants to restate the Muslim ban, something he also repeated this weekend. And when he was asked about this, about it this week, about how the U.S. can stop the killing of innocent people in the Israel-Hamas war, he basically said we should just let it all play out. And yet, the hand-wringing and cocktail party speculation <laughs> about an alternative to Joe Biden is continuing, will continue. Guess what? Joe Biden isn't perfect. No candidate is, by the way. But we have to understand what the alternative is here. If elected to a second term, Donald Trump would prosecute anyone he deems an enemy, unleash troops on protesters, and essentially unravel the rule of law as we know it. And this time, he plans to line his administration with people who will actually help him do it. But sure, Joe Biden is three years older and occasionally trips over things. Look, there's a lot to be concerned about right now when it comes to a second Trump term. The speeches are getting much more disturbing and much more unhinged, and we should all hear it that way. It's also important to talk about all of this and important to call it out. But there is nothing more important than digging into his actual plans. The faintest of silver linings here is that Trump is warning us in his own voice with a microphone on and a camera rolling, by the way. He's telling us exactly what he plans to do. We all just need to listen. Yeah. So, again, the projection here is hilarious. Like, for example, when she talked about Trump saying that, you know, what happened in between Israel and Hamas just needs to play out. That's literally what Biden's position is, right? And he's losing voters over it, right? That, that is literally Biden's position, <laughs> okay? Biden's position is, oh, well, let's give Israel money and let it play out. What's the difference, right? That, that's literally the same argument that the leftists that are abandoning Biden over the Israeli conflict are saying. That in regards to that conflict, they don't really see the difference between Biden and Trump, okay? But again... When you talk about weaponization of the DOJ, I don't see any difference between what the mainstream liberal media lies about what uh, they say Trump wants to do, right? What they make up in regards to what they say Trump wants to do, what they claim they're scared of in regards to what they lie about Trump wanting to do, and what Biden is actually doing, right? What Biden is actually doing is the thing that they claim they're so afraid of that Trump is going to do, even though Trump didn't say he was going to do that. Trump just said that Democrats have opened up the precedent okay, to allow this to happen. They let the genie out of the bottle, right? And it's just so funny how they, they never really address the corruption and the over-authoritarianism that's going on in their own party. Because again, it's all projection, right? They're the real fascists. They're the real authoritarians, okay? Trump is not nearly the authoritarian that these people make him out to be, right? He's much less authoritarian than Biden, okay? And hey, in some cases, you know, People can people may argue that Trump Trump's thing not going far enough, particularly when it comes to 
um, clamping down on these violent left-wing extremists, okay? I think he should go further on that, to be honest with you. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.